Well, hallelujah. This morning I'm, I'm going to finish up talking about the 17 attributes of God. Now this message is really interesting. I've gotten a lot of feedback in regards to this message. And, you know, things that I as a pastor or preachers or teachers think is milky and mundane and everybody knows, you'd be surprised what people don't know. And that's not an indictment. That's just the way it is. Uh, the, the myths, the mythology and false understandings and false teachings about God. A lot of people don't know the very basic attributes of who God is, how He operates, how He thinks, what His character is, and what His nature is. And I, I'll tell you that sometimes I'll, I'll preach messages and they, I think, boy, this is just, you know, uh, nobody's going to enjoy this. Nobody's going to get anything out of this because it's so milky, it's so basic. Those are the messages that I get the greatest uh, uh, response and feedback on. That people come to me and say, you know, Pastor, I never knew that. So there's so many, there's so many uh, false teachings, so many myths, so many... Uh, just things, uh, just, I don't know, fables and wives' tales in regards to God and the things of God. But the Bible clears all that up. Amen? It gives us a true understanding of who God is, how He operates, and what His attributes are. We discover, basically, that God is eternal. Amen? He's the Alpha and the Omega. He was here in the beginning. He'll be here forever. Amen? Amen. We discover that God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. We discover that He is immutable, that He never changes. We discover that He's self-sufficient. We discover that He's omniscient. That means He knows everything. We discover that He's full of wisdom. We discover that He is sovereign. Amen? That He's in control of all things. We discover that He's omnipotent, which means He's all-powerful. And we finish up discovering that God is 100% holy. Well, this morning I want to give you the rest of those today. The first thing we have to understand, and this is something that may shock many of you, is that God is a jealous God. Amen. How many of you know that God is jealous? Amen. Now, Amen. when I think of the word jealous, you know, it's, it's a lot of people don't realize that God is jealous. Because we think of jealousy as kind of a petty thing. How many of you have ever been in relationships before and your boyfriend or your girlfriend was very jealous, jealous and almost controlling and manipulative and you know everybody's been in those type of relationships. Well I tell you that God's not controlling and he's certainly not manipulative but he is a jealous God. He's jealous of you he, and me. He wants every. He wants us. He wants our attention. He, that's why we were created. He wants our fellowship. He wants our love. And He wants our worship. Now, we, just, we see in Exodus chapter 34, verse 14, the word of the Lord says, For you shall worship no other God. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Amen. Now, we also understand in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 16, the word of the Lord declares, They stirred him to jealousy with strange gods, with ambitions, a a abominations, they provoked him to anger. Now, the nation of Israel was absolutely 100% known for their idol worship. They would go along and they would worship God. They would put him first and, and then they would, they would have a blessed life. Everything would fall into place. Everything was good. Then they would go off into idol worship and it wasn't enough. So they would make their own gods and graven images and idols and statues. And then they would be taken over by their enemies and they would, they would, their crops would fail and they wouldn't have the blessings that they had that they could have had by serving the Lord. Well, we see in Psalm chapter 78 verse 58 for the sake of reference, for they provoked him to anger with their high places. They moved him to jealousy with their idols. Now their high places, was, what they would do is they would go up into the mountains in the hill country and they would build altars and they would build churches or temples and they would put their little idols in there and that's where they would offer up a smoke and and all their offerings and, and, and grain offerings, even animal offerings to these false gods that were not even real. Well, this provoke God to anger. How many of you know that God does have anger? God can be angry. Amen. God can get angry. Praise the Lord. God is a jealous God. God can get angry. That's what the Bible says. So basically what happened is this... Their idol worship provoked God to jealousy and it provoked Him to anger also. Now you might say, well, Pastor, what does this have to do with me? I don't worship statues. I don't worship false gods. I don't have little graven images. No, but let me explain to you this morning that anything that we put above God is an idol. That's right. Anything that we put above God is an idol. So whatever it is that keeps you out of church on a regular basis on Sunday morning is an idol. Whatever it is that keeps you, even if you are in church on Sunday, Sunday morning, but even if you are serving God, if you're not serving God, you're just sitting there, and whatever it is, the reason that you're not 
serving God is an idol also. So, whatever it is that you are putting above God is an idol. Say that with me this morning. Say it's an idol. It's an idol. And God's jealous. He wants you. He wants the gifts that He has put in you and the talents that He has put in you to be in operation. I'm afraid that we live in a society and a, a culture that just gives God whatever is left over. Whatever is left over, I'll give God. I'll go to church if I've got the time. I'll serve God if I can make it. If I can't, oh well. Who cares? Somebody else will take care of it. No, somebody else won't take care of it. The ball gets dropped. Listen, I'm not saying this to condemn anyone. I'm saying this to challenge. Amen? And believe that the Holy Ghost will use it for conviction. God wants us completely, 100% unadulterated obedience and love and adoration to Him. That's why Jesus said, when they asked Him, what is the greatest commandment of all? He said, you shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all your strength, and all your soul. We're supposed to love God with all that. Can I use a different mic or something? I can tell Johnny's. Johnny's normally takes care of this for me. Um, the batteries might be a little low. Do we have? How's that handheld one looking? Do we have that back there? What did she want to use? Did this work? That's a good idea. Somebody make this man a deacon. <laughs> Praise the Lord, thank you. Can you all hear me now? Is that on? Can you hear me way in the back? Yeah. How about the balcony? <laughs> <laughs> so we understand that basically anything that we place or put above God on a regular basis is an idol. Amen. So the first thing we have to understand is that God is jealous. The second thing we need to understand is that God is 100% righteous. For the Bible says in Psalm 119, verses 137, Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your rules. So the word righteous right there means uh, perfect. It means, uh, you know, no darkness. It means nothing wicked. It means 100% righteous. So God is righteous. Now, that's encouraging to me. Now, the Word also says in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4, it says this, The rock, His work, is perfect, for all His ways are justice, a God of faithfulness, and without iniquity, just and upright is He. So, listen, all of His work is perfect, all of His ways are justice. What does that mean, all of His ways are justice? Well, let me put it to you this way. God is just, and He's a judge. He will judge righteously and justly. Okay? We live in a culture where we can't say that. Some of, there's, there's about four people in this church right now that are, in, uh, that are in situations where they are in a courtroom of a particular judge in this community. Now, this judge in this community has been proven to be not just, amen? Not amen. righteous. A little bit shady, amen? And he is actually, uh, uh, basically, one of the individuals is out of that man's courtroom. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Um, and but the but the other three are suffering with that unjust judge, Amen. and you know American judges, natural judges, uh, can be bought out. They can be bribed. They can be corrupt. They can do things behind the scenes. But you know what? Isn't it wonderful to know that even though we live in an unjust society and an unjust uh, system, Amen. Even though we live in that kind of a system and on this earth, there is an eternal judge, a supreme judge, that is perfect, that is righteous, that is holy, that is pure, that cannot be bribed, that cannot be coerced, that cannot be, that cannot be uh, messed with. Amen? Amen. Isn't Amen. that wonderful? I want to give that judge some praise this morning. Give him some praise this morning. Give him some glory. Give him some honor. Amen. That's what God is. He is a righteous, right judge. For the Bible says in Psalm 97, verse 2, clouds and thick darkness are all around him. What does that mean? Have you ever wondered when you read that, why does it say darkness is around God? Because it's in the natural, we can never behold his glory. We can never behold his light. So what happens is he's, when he appeared, the psalmist saw the image of God, the vision of God. He saw him with clouds of thick darkness. And he says that righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Now, that's interesting right there. When the Bible talks about a king's throne, it's referring to his place of power. Kings didn't sit on the throne all the time. What they would do is they would sit on the throne only when they were making a proclamation, only when they were making a judgment, 
only when they were going off, when they were decreeing, declaring war or hearing some kind of a case. So a throne represents power with the very foundation of God's power. The very foundation of His throne is His righteousness and His justice. Amen. Amen. What does Jesus say in Matthew chapter 7? About the man who goes out, there's two types of men, two types of people. One man goes out and he builds his house on the sand. The winds come, the waves come, they, they crash it down. Another man builds his house on a rock, a foundation. The same wind comes, the same waves come, that house stands. There's a foundation. See, if we don't stand for truth, if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. That's right. Amen. And what's done in the darkness will be brought out to light. That's why the Bible says that the wicked run. They run, and they're always looking behind them. They're always worried about somebody getting them because they've got to cover this lie, because they cover that lie, right. to cover that lie, to, 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 to cover all their tracks, and there's no, there's no truth in them. It's, they'll lie and, and, and steal and cheat and do anything that they need to in order to do what? In order to hide their iniquity, in order to hide their sin. And there's no foundation in that. But listen, if we live with justice and righteousness in our lives, we can have stability. We do the right thing no matter what it costs us. We make the right decision no matter what, what, what it costs right. us. Amen. We make the right choices no matter what it costs us. We stand Amen. for righteousness. We stand for justice. Then we will have a foundation under our feet. Amen. And that's what the Bible says about God. Is the reason that He is so stable, the reason He is so strong, is because righteousness and justice are His very thrones. Well, the Bible also says in Psalm 36, verse 6, Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgment are like the great deep. Man and beast you save, O Lord. Now it's interesting. Isn't it interesting in verse 6 that it talks about the mountains? Aren't those mountains beautiful? It's one of the best things I love about living in this part of the country. Amen? Amen. I love the fact that it's a, cl a, a calm, a decent climate. I love the beautiful scenes of the mountains. Do you know that in the Old Testament, in biblical days, mountains represented throughout the Scripture? Anytime you ever see this, that's why the Bible says, I will look to the hills from whence my help comes. Anytime you ever see the word mountain, when the Bible talks about the mountains, it talks about the majesty, majesty of the hills has often suggested the supremacy of right over wrong. Rocks. Remember the old Prudential commercial, get a piece of the rock? What do we think of? Rocks, mountains. We think of stability. We think of strength. Amen. The uplifted strength of the hills, uh, <coughs> basically, it, it, it was an emblem of eternal truth in the Old Testament, in biblical days. So when the Bible says your righteousness is like the mountains, God, your judgments are like great deep. Man and beast, you say, O Lord. What is we're giving us a picture of is that God's righteousness, you can bank on it. There's stability in it. It's a rock. It's strong. Isn't that comforting to know? Amen. Now why am I laboring on this? Listen, because you're going to go to work tomorrow, you, go, you might go to a place where your boss is not, does not have your best interest in mind. The people that run your company may not have your best interest in mind. They could care less. You might be in a situation where you're in the court system or you're in a, a situation through work and, and people have messed, you've been through life and people have messed you over, people of power, people of influence, people of wickedness. But isn't it wonderful to know that God is not like that? Amen. God is not like that. He's Amen. not going to mess you over because He can. God is strong. God is righteous. God is eternal. God is just. He is full of integrity according to His Word. I don't know Amen. about you, but I think that demands an applause. I think that demands a praise for Him. I think we ought to praise the Lord for His goodness. Praise, praise Him for His integrity. Praise, praise Him for His justice. Praise Him for His righteousness. Amen. 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 Psalm 97 verse 6 says this, The heavens proclaim His righteousness, and the people see His glory. And the word of the Lord declares in Psalm 111, verse 3. Yes, I've got a lot of scriptures because the Bible's full of it. Amen. Psalm 111, verse 3 says, Full of splendor and ma majesty is His work, and His righteousness endures forever. Isn't it wonderful to know that there is no end to God's righteousness? That's right. There is no end to His justice. There is no end to His goodness. There is no end to His right standing. Well, the, the third attribute of God I want to talk to you about today is His goodness. Everybody say goodness. 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 Amen. 
Well, the Bible says in Psalm chapter 145, verse 9, the Lord is good to all, yes. and His mercy is over all that He has made. Now, I think you understand what goodness is. What's the opposite of good? Bad. What's the opposite of good? Evil. What's the opposite of light? Darkness. Amen. What's the opposite of God? No. God has no rival. Amen. Satan is beneath Him, under His feet. There is no rival to God. Amen. Amen. But God is good. He is light. In Him there is no absolute darkness. Praise the Lord. For the Bible goes on to say in Psalm chapter 86, verse 5, For You, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in the steadfast love to all who call upon You. Amen. 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 To all who call Amen. upon you, to sinners, to saints, to righteous, to unrighteous, He is good and He is forgiving and He abounds with steadfast love. That means it's steady love. Thank you. you know, that's powerful because the people in our lives, they don't always have steady love for us, do they? That's right. They'll love you as long as you please them. They'll love you as long as you make them happy. They'll love you as long as you're giving. They'll love you as long as you're performing. You're that little hamster on that wheel. You just keep going and going and you're trying to please and just to be loved and you're trying to please just to be accepted. And if I don't act right, they're not going to love me. If I don't be right, they're not going to love me. If I can't give, then their love is going to go away. But isn't it wonderful to know that according to the scriptures God's love is steady it is steadfast it never ends it's not based upon my performance it's based upon who he is because God is light and in him there is no darkness hallelujah as you can tell the fire up this morning amen yes thank you for the Bible says in first chronicles chapter 16 verse 34 oh give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his steadfast love endures forever. There it is again. Thank you, Jesus. James 1 verse 17. Uh, for the sake of reference says. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights. With whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Amen. Hear me on this. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Do you know God doesn't give bad gifts? A lot of times people, young people, Christians will come to me. Singles will come to me. And they'll say, Nancy will say, Pastor, there's no Nancy in here, so I'm using that as an example. She'll say, I met this man, and his name is Billy, and I'm wondering if he's the one for me, if God sent him. Well, is he saved? Nobody believes in God. Lady, even the devils believe in God, the Bible says. Well, he says he's going to go to church once we get married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell him this, tell him. Hold your breath. Yeah, you tell them, give you a call you'll, and ask for Mrs. Blue. You'll be the lady in the corner holding your breath. <laughs> Amen. Mrs. Blue. <laughs> Don't count on it, lady. Amen. Well, you know, uh, he, he, <coughs> is he good to you? No, but he's got a good heart. No, that's not how it is because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Whatever's in your heart, how a person is in his heart, so they manifest. Amen. Just admit it. Admit it. See, he looks fine, and that's what you like about him. That's all you like about him. You might as well admit that. Because the Bible says he's not, I'll tell you right now, sis, he's not of God. Because God doesn't give bad gifts. Amen. Well, but wait a minute. How's he going to come to know Jesus except through me? If Christ going to the cross isn't enough to turn turn his heart and save him, what in the That's world? Right. You're thinking an awful lot of yourself, yeah. don't you, sis? Amen. You're nobody's savior. You're nobody's rescue. I want you to understand if you're single here this morning, stay that way until God brings you an absolute 100% good and perfect gift. Now, there's nobody perfect. Don't get me wrong. But you'll know it because God will bring you the right person that has godly attributes. You are worth more. Somebody, I don't know if it's not even in my notes. Somebody needs to hear that. You're worth more than what you're settling for. Don't settle. Don't settle. It's better to have a little bit of loneliness than be with the wrong person and have a lifetime of misery. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Because every good and perfect gift comes from above. Amen. And we're in the gift giving Amen. season. Amen. So Amen. the third thing that God is, His attribute is goodness. The fourth thing is God is patient. And I say amen to that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, praise the Lord that He's patient. Because I'm a work in progress. I don't know about you. You might have arrived. But I'm a work in progress. For the Bible says in Numbers chapter 14 verse 18. Here's what it says. The Lord is slow to anger. Thank God. And abundant, abounding in steadfast love. 
forgiving iniquity, that's sin, and transgression. But he will by no means... Now listen, I want to stop there for a minute. This was written in the Old Testament under judgment. Amen? Before the Calvary, before the cross, before Jesus died and spilled His blood for us. If this is how God was perceived in the Old Testament, how much more patient is He to us in the New Testament? Amen. Amen. A lot of people say, well, Pastor, we're under judgment here. America's under judgment. And I don't believe that anymore. I believe that America is not reaping the harvest she could reap if we lived better righteous lives before God. But I believe that the Bible says that we're in a time of grace. When Christ went to the cross, dropped His head and said, it is finished, we are in grace. God is gracious to us. God is merciful to us. Amen. We as a nation are blessed because 200 years ago we were built on the right foundation and the right principles and we put the right uh, the biblical perspectives into, into practice and we're still yielding and reaping some of that harvest. It could be greater, yes, because God, there's a blessing upon obedience. But I'm here to tell you that judgment hasn't hit this country yet. Judgment hasn't hit this world yet because we're still here. When that trumpet sounds in the dead and Christ shall rise first and we go up to meet Him in the sky and then that door closes of grace and now judgment comes upon the earth, that's when judgment's going to come. Amen. Read the book of Revelation. But thank God that we are not appointed under, under wrath, the Bible says. We will be with Him. We will be secure. We will be with Him. Amen. We'll be raptured out of this place and let all hell break loose upon it. And by that time, it's going to be too late there's judgment yes. but now you, Jesus. God is patient he is slow to anger he abounds in steadfast love forgiving iniquity and transgression however everybody say but, but. 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 how many of you know there's always a but right. there's always a but thank you Jesus but he will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to <coughs> the third and the fourth generation what that means is this Remember how I said God is righteous? God is just? God is holy? We like that, don't we, when it comes to our enemies. But do you realize that God eventually has the obligation to judge us, His children, as well? Yeah. And He cannot wink on our sin. He's not going to wink on our sin. That would make Him unjust. But I'm His child. That would make Him even more unjust because that means God plays favorites. That, makes him, that would make Him unjust. He's not a, there's no darkness in Him. So what this means is God is slow to anger. He's patient. He's forgiving. But listen, make no mistake about it. We cannot ever get to a place in our lives where we think we're going to get away with sin. Because sin has consequences to it. If Amen. I sow a seed, I'm going to reap a harvest. Amen? Amen. So the best thing is to do this. Turn to God. Follow Him the best of your ability yes. all the days of your life. Keep your praises high and your sin low. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. Because He is patient. Thank God that He is patient. And the, the fifth attribute of God is that He is full of grace. And this is why He's patient. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Here it is. By grace you have been saved. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. By grace you have been saved. Now, what does that mean? Well, grace, for those of you that don't know, is not is getting what I don't deserve. Amen. Mercy is not getting what I do deserve. See, the Bible says the wages of sin is what? Death. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us deserves death. We deserve eternal death and physical death in hell. That's what we deserve. That's what the Bible says. Wages of sin is death. But the, the grace of God and His mercy has saved us. Verse 6 says, And we raised us up with Him and seated us with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. None of us in here deserve that. But we're positioned in Christ Jesus. That's where the believer's authority comes in. Totally another other message. Verse 7. So that in the coming ages... He might show the immeasurable riches of His grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Thank this you, grace, Jesus. God went to the cross. He gave us this grace. You know why? Because He wants to show us His kindness yes. through Christ Jesus. For here it is, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Amen. And that not of your own doing. Right. It is the gift of God. Thank verse you. 9. Not the result of works so that nobody can boast. I can never boast before God or anybody and say, I'm a good enough person to be right with Him. I'm a good enough person to be saved. 
I'm a good enough person to go to hell. Amen. There's nobody that's ever walked this earth other than Jesus Christ who could ever make that statement because God is 100% holy, 100% perfect, and that we can trust. And His patience is produced, and grace comes as a, His patience comes as a result of His grace. Amen? Amen. We don't deserve it, but He gave it to us anyways. Amen. It's amazing Amen. grace. Come on and praise Him for that. The next thing I want to talk to you about today is that the sixth, the sixth attribute of God, we're almost done, believe it or not, is God is truth. 1 John 5, verse 20 says this, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know Him who is true. What's the opposite of true? False. Do you believe for a minute that you're getting 100% truth from any, I don't care what side you're on, right or left, any, of the news media is 100 percent true. No. There's some you'll get a little bit more from, but for the at the end of the day, you can't know more. It's a symbol. Do you think our politicians tell us the truth? No. How do you know they're lying? Their lips are moving. <laughs> Man, I just slammed judges, politicians. Who's next? <laughs> Amen. We gotta pray for them. We gotta honor them. We gotta obey and do what we're told to do. Amen. As long as it doesn't violate God's law, law and word. So what I say, I mean no disrespect by it, but they're human. Those who govern us, those who lead us are human. But I've seen the way some people, not personally, but I've known of and heard of the way some other nations are governed. And other nations and rulers rule their people. And I say we got it pretty good, amen? amen. I'm great, grateful for where we live and how we're governed, yes. who leads us and how they lead us. Praise the Lord. I'm grateful for that. But at the end of the day, we don't know the truth, 100% truth. And the devil's not going to tell us the truth. The Bible says that the devil is a liar. In him there is no truth. He's the father Amen. of lies. So, therefore, 1 John 5.20 says that we, if we know the Son of God, we'll know truth. John 14.16 says this, says the same thing. Jesus said to him, here we go, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And John chapter 1, verse 14, and the Word is Jesus Christ, he became flesh, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word, through Him all things were made. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father. Full of what? Full of grace and, and full of truth. Isn't it wonderful that whatever God says in His Word, we can believe it. Amen. No matter what. 100% we can believe it. God is true. <coughs> and number seven, the final one I want to give you today is number seven. God is faithful. Everybody say faithful. Faithful. For the Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 86, verse 15. Here's what it says. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful, gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. I want you to understand this morning. The majority of the people that are here at the sound of my voice or be watching by television or watching over the internet have been hurt, are messed up in their hearts, their souls, their mind in this generation that we live in because people have, somebody has not been truthful with you. Somebody has not been faithful to you. Somebody has not been gracious to you. Somebody has been full of darkness and unrighteousness to you. And we live in this kind of a culture. We live in this kind of society. And, and listen, every generation it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. That's why Jesus said in the end days, the love of many. The love of many will grow cold. People will be lovers of themselves over lovers of God. They'll be self-seeking, self-serving. And I would like to tell you that it's not in the church, but it's even in the church. Right. It's, the, it's the spirit of the age that we live in. And the reason so many people are messed up in their hearts, in their minds, and have struggles in their emotions, and have baggage in their life, is because of every the opposite of everything <coughs> I just shared with you that God is. <coughs> That's people. Now, if you're fortunate, and, you, and you, you, you came up with a good home, you came up with a good family, and you were, you, made, you were confident in that, you made right decisions, and you've got a wonderful spouse, and you've got a wonderful family, God bless you. That's wonderful. Amen. Yes. But for the most part, that's not the case. For the most part, it's not. There's scars in here, and they run deep because people have lied to you, because people have been unfaithful, because people have been untrue. And if you get nothing out of this long series, 
I want you to get this and understand through the preaching, as methodical as it may feel and mundane as it may feel to you and repetitive as it may feel, because I've heard this all my life, you've heard it with your these ears, but you've got to listen to it with these ears. Amen. Amen. Heart, Amen. That God is faithful. That Amen. God is good. That yes. God is just. Yes. That Amen. God will never leave you. Yes. God will never forsake you. Thank you Amen. He is my foundation. If I get good things out of other human beings, that's gravy. That's icing on the cake. Amen. I don't expect it. Whether I get it or don't get it, I expect the worst. Believe the best, the Bible says, but I expect the worst out of human beings. You know why? Because I is one. And we all have sin natures That's and we right. all have struggles. Amen. We put too much of an expectation on people and too little on God. Amen. It needs to be the other way around. Amen. There's a, only God can I trust. Only God can I believe. Amen. Only God has my best interest. <laughs> Only Amen. God is crazy about me. Amen. Yeah. And our parents, you know, your parents love you. And you, as parents, you love your children. And as much as you love them, and that the closest thing, I believe, to the heart of God is a godly mother. Oh, a, a mother, period. Mothers love their children Amen. with the closest bond on this earth. To, to, the, to the bond of God. And dad's a good dad? Yes, absolutely. I've seen there's some great dads in here, great fathers in here. Absolutely. Parents are the closest, good parents are the closest, in my opinion, bond, to, to closest picture, portrait to the bond of the, of the father that there is on this earth. But beyond that, you're on your own. Now, Pastor, that is depressing. Well, it's depressing the way you've lived for 40 years. It's depressing the way you live for 20 years, torn up from one relationship to another relationship, one letdown to another letdown. This emotional roller coaster, you know why? Because you're giving human beings your power. You're giving human beings, if I'm going to be happy, somebody's going to make me happy. I'm relying on somebody else to make me happy. If I'm going to get promoted, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to be wealthy, if I'm going to, it's because I'm going to get promoted in the workplace. Good luck. Get your eggs out of those baskets. Amen. Put all your eggs in His basket. Amen. Because promotion comes from the Lord. Amen. Love comes from the Lord. Amen. Truth comes from the Lord. Strength comes from the Lord. Security comes from the Lord. And it's all. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So we understand that God is faithful. Everybody say faithful. Amen. And we understand that in Psalm 1, uh, know that there, let's read Deuteronomy again, 7 through 9. I got it right here. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love yes. with those who love Him and keeps His commandment to a thousand generations. Amen. You know what His commandments are? Glory. His Word, His Bible. If God says you can have something in His Bible, eternal life, forgiveness, mercy, healing, provision, you can count on it. Because it's the, His Word says that He keeps His Word, He keeps His commandment to a thousand generations. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 119, verse 90. I got that too. <laughs> Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Isn't that encouraging? You mean even when I've made a mistake of my life? Even when I've messed up? Surely He can't love me then. What's the Still word saying? The steadfast love Still of does. the Lord never ceases. It never ends. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Yes. Like Brandon said and started off the worship today is exactly right. We sang that song. He didn't know what I was going to preach. That's the Holy Ghost putting it all together. God is faithful to us when we're not faithful to Him. Amen. Amen. God said He'd never leave us and He'd never forsake us. Right. Though we transgress, though we fall away, though we make our bed, the Bible says, in the pit of hell, He says, still, I will follow you there. Amen. That's how much He loves us. That's how crazy He is about us. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies endure forever. A little boy came up to me one time after service and he said, Pastor, your messages are like, your preachings like the mercy of God. I said, oh, that's nice. It's very poetic. Why would you say such a thing? He goes, because it endures forever. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> so, the Bible also says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, let us hold fast. What does that mean? When you're in a battle and you're weary and you're going through tough times, which some of you are right now, this is a reminder to you. Hold fast. Hang on to the confession 
of our hope without wavering. In other words, keep speaking God's Word. That's why we believe that. The power of speaking His Word over our situations. Don't quit doing that. No matter what the circumstances look like. No matter what the situations look like. Amen? Take another look at it. Here's the thing. I, I've used this example many times. We know that God heals us. The Bible says that by His stripes we what? We were healed. It's a done deal. It's past tense. We receive it. We claim it. But sometimes our bodies don't manifest that right away. Sometimes the doctor's report doesn't say it. Amen? Amen. But we know Amen. that God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. So Amen. here's what happens. You, you, you're believing for a healing. You go to 1 Peter 2.24. You put your hand on that. And you say, by His stripes, I am healed. I believe it. I receive it. I thank you for it, God. I'm healed right here. I believe it. It's on my, on my wrist. Cover that up and you walk away. The devil says, take another look at it. <laughs> so you go back. And you, Man, it still looks pretty, pretty raw. Uh, by His stripes we were healed. I believe it, I believe it, I receive it. That settles it. Cover it up. The devil says, take another look at it. The next time the devil says, take another look at it, don't go to that. Open up that word. Go to 1 Peter 2.24 and says, yep, still says it, devil. By His stripes we were healed. That's what it means to hold fast to the confession of our faith, our hope. Don't waver. For He who promised anything in His word is faithful to complete it unto the end. Hallelujah. Come on and magnify the Lord. He's just, He's holy, and He's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8 says this, The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the Word of God will stand forever. Amen. Not one jot, not one tittle, out of the Word of God will ever be changed. <coughs> That's how faithful He is. That's how eternal He yes, is. Amen. You can take it to the bank. Hallelujah. And listen, the Bible also says that God is not a man that He should lie. He's not a human being. He cannot lie. He can't lie. And that's what's so powerful. You, you, when you confess your sins to Him, you've been born again. The Bible says their sins were as red as scarlet, but He washes them white as snow. Amen. And He throws them in the sea of forgetfulness. Right. So that means if we remember, and the people we violated and sinned against, they remember. But God doesn't remember. That's why he, he said about David who was an adulterer and David who was a murderer. I mean, in all those things, God said at the end of David's life, he was a holy man. He said about Abraham, he was he's a man of faith. He never wavered. You know, we look back at that and we say David killed, David committed adultery, but God said he was a holy man. God's a liar. No. God forgot about it. Because if he said he'll forget about it, he will. He can't lie. Isn't that encouraging? Yeah, Come right now. Abraham wavered, man. He tried to sell his wife out as his sister because he feared the king. Amen. He went out and, and helped God out when God said, you're going to be the father of many nations and it produced an Ishmael. But God said about Abraham in the, in the Hebrews 11 Hall of Fame, Abraham was a man of faith, never wavered. You know why? Because Abraham and David went before God and said, I'm sorry. I repent. Please forgive me. God said, done. Threw it in the sea of forgetfulness. And if you went, you yourself and myself went before God today and said, God, do you remember when I did such and such and such and such a time and such and such a day? God would say, no. All I see is the blood of Jesus covering you. All I see is the robe of righteousness on you. Come on. Let me hug you. Let me love you. Come on and eat. That's what God would say to you right now. Because he's not a man that he can lie. Hallelujah. His word is eternal. So we understand through this teaching, in closing, that God is a jealous God, that God is a righteous God, that God is good, that God is patient, that God is full of grace, that God is truth, and that God is faithful. Do you believe that this morning? Stand to your feet.